Tasmania, with a total land mass just over 26,000 square miles, has almost 5 million acres of the finest hardwood forests in the world, yielding saw logs and pulpwood. A few native softwoods, such as King Billy, Hewan and Celery Top, grow in restricted areas. As these are extremely slow in maturing, they're not suitable for large-scale plantings. The future of Tasmanian forests lies in the regeneration of the eucalypts, the tallest hardwoods in the world. Generally, the best eucalypt forests in the state are found in areas where the annual rainfall is over 40 inches. Tasmania has three distinct eucalypt regions. These are the northwest coast from Dunarain to Marawa, extending southward for an average distance of 30 miles from the coast. In the northeast between the Tamar estuary and the east coast, extending north to the coastal plain and south to Ben Lomond. And in the fertile Hewan and Derwent region, which extends for about 110 miles from the south coast to the southern edge of the central plateau. The average width of this zone is 20 miles. With such a rich heritage of timber resources, the future well-being of our forests is vital, both to the state and to the nation. This well-being depends on proper use and regeneration. With correct treatment, our eucalypt forests can be regenerated and a new crop established. The first type of Tasmanian eucalypt forest is that with an understory of rainforest species. This is found where the average annual rainfall is in excess of 45 inches. Myrtle and sassafras predominate to form a thick understory, which is often the same age as the eucalypts above. The second type features a similar pattern in eucalypts, but with a much younger, scrubby understory. In the third type, usually known as open forest, there's very little underscrub at all, and trees are of all ages. This type of forest is quite common in Tasmania and is found in drier country, where fairly frequent light fires have burnt through the area. There, the forest has a thick or scrubby understory, as in types 1 and 2. The undergrowth must be cleared to enable regeneration to occur. In the process of using our forest wealth to advantage, Normal logging of the trees disrupts the understory to a certain extent and regeneration occurs along old tracks. Although it doesn't disrupt it sufficiently for complete regeneration, logging does help. The more the standing scrub is flattened, the less future work there is to do. Remaining scrub may then be knocked down by a bulldozer or a chainsaw. Unfortunately, chainsaws and bulldozers do not remove the debris which can amount to over 800 tonnes per acre. Clearing the ground sufficiently for seeding poses a major problem. The only economic answer is controlled burning. Boundaries or fire lines are selected to ensure that the fire doesn't spread to surrounding areas. Under suitable weather conditions, the area within the boundaries can then be burnt. Burning is one of the most important factors in regeneration because it provides a suitable seedbed. Controlled burning means firefighting equipment must be deployed in advance, ready for use at any point where burning debris may be flown across a fire break or into standing timber. In some types of country, it's very easy to control the fire, but in all cases, long-term forward planning is essential. For example, it would be useless to regenerate the top of a hillside and then burn out the bottom five years later. In the open forest, fire isn't always used for regeneration, as there's very little understory to remove, and the trees are at varying stages of maturity. If fire were used, many young saplings would be destroyed. These smaller trees must be preserved and given ample room to grow to maturity. The solution is often simple. Trees of sufficient maturity for sawmilling are removed. 
Extra openings are made by felling or ring barking useless trees. When holes are made in the canopy, sunlight is let in. Competition for soil moisture is reduced and seedlings and saplings grow rapidly. In scrubby forest, once logging is finished and the understory and debris removed by controlled fire, seeding, the final step in the regeneration process, may begin. Although 50% of forest regeneration occurs naturally, for satisfactory results, some artificial seeding is needed. With seeding, we have two definite alternatives. In regrowth forests, certain marked trees are reserved as seed trees, and these remain standing when logging is complete. When the debris is burned, the seed capsules on the marked trees shed their seeds in the normal manner. After seeding, these trees are then harvested. This is called natural regeneration. The other alternative applies when there's not enough seed in the capsules on defective old trees left standing after logging. The area is clear felled, all available seed is collected, and the area is finally burnt. Seed is sown either by hand or from the air, depending on the amount of ground to be covered. One of the most successful and widely used methods is hand sowing, used extensively throughout Tasmania. The treated seeds are spread with small rotary seeders. About 50,000 fertile seeds, weighing no more than one pound, are required per acre. One of the astonishing aspects of nature lies in the ability of such small seed to grow into the world's tallest hardwood trees, attaining a height of more than 300 feet. The other method is aerial seeding, which is advantageous where large areas have to be covered quickly and cheaply. The seed is dropped in a controlled flow from a low-flying aircraft in the standard method for pasture seed and fertilizer. The aircraft can only operate in perfect weather conditions as a comparatively light wind will disperse these small seeds from the target area. In time, younger forests of even regrowth will permit methodical and economic methods of logging, assuring the recovery of the maximum amount of timber for both sawmill logs and pulpwood. By improved regeneration, we're ensuring that future generations have adequate timber for all their needs. Or never again will mankind know a surplus of wood. With care and proper management, we can reap a rich and perpetual harvest from our great hardwood forests.